Hello everyone. Uh, in today's demonstration, I will introduce the Enhanced Component uh, property, a powerful experimental feature that can uh, greatly improve the performance and the usability of your Canvas, app, uh, Canvas application. I will introduce the benefit of adopting this feature with an example, and then we will understand how it works through a demonstration. Before that, I would like to, to take some time to introduce myself. I'm Nicola Ferranti, Modern Workplace Consultant at Havana Italy, and through my blog, I report my experiences in the field of Power Platform with the aim of sharing ideas and inspiring new solutions. Below, we'll find my social QR code that you can use to, to stay in touch. So let's examine a possible scenario to introduce an enhanced component property. Let's assume we need to develop a Canvas app which can manage a product's catalog by custom API. To make the app more maintainable and reusable, we decided to, to use uh, an approach based on component. And in this scenario, the component has the role to render the list of the products and uh, apply a discount. To develop this component, uh, you could choose uh, to to, to invoke the API within the component uh, using the or asset property to retrieve the list or, or, of products. And you could use the button to update the product information. Well, I'm considering to use custom connector because in my opinion, it's more sensitive to changes than a standard connector and can point out the potential problems. Anyway, this approach works, but it has many disadvantages. When developing a Canvas application, we always have to take a look at the HTTP request and avoid overusing them to prevent performance issues. So we need to review this approach and adopt an alternative implementation. For the GET request, uh, you can store in the main app the data and pass it to the component via input property. Instead, for uh, uh, the PUT API, we need a way to move the request from the component to, to the main app. And a solution could be to fire an event from the component and execute a callback function in the main app uh, to update the product information, information and then update uh, the store as well. We adopt, this sol we adopt this solution to, to prevent the, the duplication of information between main app and uh, its components. Also, we centralize the entire business logic only in the main app. So it will be more maintainable than, uh, than before. And in addition to this, uh, we unlock the component from the custom connector dependencies. So, so the component now has only the role to render the information. But now we have to understand how we can create an event. So now comes into play enhanced component property, and thanks to this feature, you can fire a custom event from the component to the main app. Previously, you could get the same result using toggle control or, or reset property, but this approach was complicated to, to manage. As well as the creation of custom event, you can create custom function, which contain an expression that return a specific value. And also you can create a custom action to manipulate a collection or a variable from the, the main app. And uh, finally, we can develop better uh, components uh, with a strong synergy with main app uh, and uh, optimize the app uh, as well. So let's jump into the demo. During this demo, we'll go over the, the scenario anali analyzed uh, earlier uh, to, to see how enhanced component property works. So let me open my Visual Studio. So to follow the scenario, first of all, uh, I have created a set of API to manage a catalog of video game, games and uh, simulate the, uh, simulate the backend's uh, work. This is- uh, hey Nicolo, uh, just, just real quick, could you, uh, could you increase the font size a little bit there just so it's a little easier to read? Definitely, definitely. Thank you. Is good enough? Yeah, perfect, excellent, thank you. Problem. So this is a .NET Web API project that uh, explores an approach on a minimal API. And to leave the time uh, for the enhanced component property explanation, show, I will not examine the entire solution. But uh, for the for the purpose of the demo, it's important to see that we have a simple crude operation to work with catalog. Uh, we have a post to create a new game, uh, get, uh, put, uh, and uh, and delete. So after testing the API and deploying uh, them in a service like Azure Apps Service, for example, we are ready to create a custom connector to make this API accessible for the Power App Canvas. So, 
So adaptive custom connector improve the collaboration between a traditional developer and citizen developer. I have already created a custom connector by adding all endpoints in definition in definition tab. And I will not disseminate custom connectors tab in deep, but you can find API solution and custom connector swagger in my GitHub repository. Then after we have completed the, the custom connector test, uh, you are ready to, to use it uh, in, uh, in your Canvas app. So let's jump uh, in uh, our Canvas app. This is our simple Canvas app, uh, which can manage a list of game uh, available and apply a discount. It inter it, this component uh, interacts with the main app uh, by a custom event. So let's immediately see how, uh, how to create one. And, uh, here you can see the component. To make possible the creation of an event, you have to enable the enhanced component property. And to do that, you have, go, you have to go in setting, upcoming feature, experimental, and looking for an uh, enhanced component property and enable it. Uh, now, if we click in the uh, uh, in right tab, uh, we see different property type. One of the main goals of the last update is to provide clearer and more concise concepts. So some property have changed the name, for example, data. Uh, for example, data. This is the classic property type where you can define input and output property of the component. Uh, yeah, and nothing new from, uh, from before. You can create input property to, to pass data to the component, and you still create output property to expose uh, a data which will be read, uh, read, uh, read in, uh, from the, the main app. But uh, more than this property, uh, as you can see, you can define a distinct type of property like function. Function property are property that can accept argument and return a, a value. At this time, a function does not support data flow, but we can expect it in, in the future. As you can see, you can choose from two kind of property, input, uh, uh, input and uh, output. An input function uh, is a way for a consuming app to provide logic uh, to, to a component, similar to a function pointer or a callback function. Instead, the, the output uh, function is a function defined uh, in the component that takes some arguments uh, and uh, returns a value to the app. Another property, another new property type is action, which allows side effects formula. This is interesting because uh, it enables the to reset only a specific control or variable. And to do that, uh, uh, to do this before, you had to use uh, a reset property or some toggle. And uh, in the end, we have event, previously called the behavior. I think this is the most important property that you must know to improve your components and uh, your app. Uh, it allows to fire uh, a custom event from the component and then execute a callback in the main app to update uh, data. And in this demo, we are focusing on this feature because it's exactly what we need to satisfy the requirements uh, uh, we introduced uh, earlier. So let's see how it, uh, how it works. I have uh, already created uh, a new event custom called, uh, uh, called Invoke Discount Event, and I defined a parameter game uh, parameter called the game object selected. We have to consider the parameter excited like an argument of a function. And in this case, game objects selected is a record type uh, which has uh, this uh, model. Okay, so now we have uh, to add this event, uh, invoke, discount, uh, uh, invoke discount event, uh, to a control which has uh, the on select or on change property. So we can use uh, a button. And if you look at this button, the on select property of this button, we can see that uh, I insert the, the event, okay, and uh, I pass uh, uh, this item as parameter. Uh, but what is this item? Uh, it's the, the item that you will select from the gallery because uh, we have uh, a gallery items. So now uh, when we will click uh, apply discount button, uh, we will fire this event. So now we have to, to define the callback function. So come back in our app and uh, insert the component. And uh, in the right panel now, uh, you can find uh, the, the event property that we have defined, uh, that we have created. Uh, at this point, uh, we, are, uh, we are going to insert the function which will be executed when the, the event is fired. And in this case, we are going to invoke the put API 
uh, to apply 20% uh, uh, discount to the price. Uh, and if everything goes fine, uh, we are going to update uh, game list store, uh, which will be used in the entire app by using the, the, get, uh, the get API. So let's try it. And uh, to do that, uh, I'd like to open the monitor to have the full view of the API. And if I could if I click on apply discount of this game. So we can see everything goes fine. If we come back in the monitor, we can see that the put uh, request body. And as you can see, uh, the property of body uh, is populated with the property uh, with the item selected. So uh, now uh, that uh, uh, Note that uh, we pass uh, also the data through the component uh, via list game. So adopting this, this solution prevented the duplication of information because we have a store game list store available for the entire app and we centralize the entire business logic and HTTP request only in the main app. So the app will be more maintainable and more performancing than before. But uh, arrive at this point, you might, might ask uh, why I didn't do the same thing uh, by using uh, a function property. Because the function property has to be, uh, has to be pure. And uh, to show you what pure function means, uh, I have created a new input property function, custom input uh, function, uh, in the component uh, and uh, it returns uh, a boolean value and uh, it has also two parameters, UPC and price. Now we have to image that you invoke this function using a button by uh, the on select property. For example, uh, consider this button R2 card and if we expect the on select, you can see that uh, we are invoking uh, uh, this function uh, from, the, from the on select. And, uh, and now we have to come back in our main app and uh, define, uh, define, uh, the, define the, the function, that, the expression that uh, will be executed when the function is called. So if I click on uh, custom input function, we can see the, uh, we can see the expression. And uh, however, uh, you cannot use uh, it uh, to, to change value elsewhere in the, in the app. So it has to be a pure function, and that means you cannot use uh, the update context uh, or a set, uh, and uh, you, can, uh, you can't even uh, use patch to update a collection. You can, you can only define a single expression uh, that returns a defi defined value, as this example. And this functionality finds uh, an outlet in complex components uh, where, a given functions, where a given function is called uh, multiple time. And uh, so, uh, that's all, uh, and thanks uh, for your attention. Back to you, David. Mm -hmm.